Welcome to the Sanity Project podcast, the place for internet technology professionals whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We are here to provide solutions that will help the IT pro live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, I'm Joanne Victoria, the I Know What Works coach. I'm the author of seven books, including Lighting Your Path, How to Create the Life You Want, and Pushy for a Moment, Instant Solutions to Everyday Challenges. I'm also the host of the Sanity Project podcast, and I partner with IT pros in telecommunications, technology, entertainment, and mass media industries whose work-life balance plan has imploded and who want more success, more confidence, more fun, and more inner peace. The Sanity Project podcast is a platform for experts in the personal development community to share their wisdom, expertise, and solutions that will help the IT professional live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. And I know our guest today is someone that can help them and anyone else that's listening as well. Philip DeLuca is a licensed clinical social worker, but he prefers to be called the untalk therapist. Philip is also a psychotherapy disruptor, relationship healer, author, speaker, and guinea pig. He is a psychotherapy disruptor because he developed an alternative to conventional relationship counseling that is the opposite of what is conventionally accepted. He is a relationship healer because he heals relationships that express yourself, and I think he's referring to talk communication, approaches damage. He is a guinea pig because he has used his own struggles to help develop this approach. Philip developed an alternative holistic model that frequently works where conventional couples therapy fails, brings quick results, and is easy to understand and implement. He calls it communication for the 21st century. Phil's on talk therapy is the most efficient least expensive method of ending relationship conflict and making communication fun again. I will bring uh, Philip forward with what he's going to help us with today, which he's going to offer us a new way to resolve relationship conflict with or without a cooperative partner, people. Welcome to the show, Philip DeLuca. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate you being here. I think, is your book, The Solo Partner, Repairing Your Relationship on Your Own, um, related to this new method you have of therapy for couples? Or Yeah, that was an earlier version. Actually, I took chapter three in there, Mm -hmm. uh, reactivity, and I just uh, expanded it out. I wove in holistic health alternatives and uh, looked at the science behind it in much more detail and came up with uh, an, ex- an extension of that that's uh, much more comprehensive. And more Good. Detailed. That happens sometimes, isn't it? We write something and then we go, oh, I like this part. Let's work on this one. Yes, that's what happened. Exactly. Good. So how, do, how is... How can you help the listeners? We do have IT professionals, information technology specialists who are run the range of all sorts of labels and titles within companies, as well as people who need relationship counseling. And I say counseling because, you know, that's pretty much what you are. But they need help in relationships on the job and at home. Yes. So how can you help people who are listening uh, resolve this relationship conflict? Okay, well, it's all related. The stuff that goes on at home uh, feeds back to work, which feeds back to home. Uh, and, uh, and work creates an enormous amount of stress. Stress then affects the foods we eat, uh, how we sleep or don't sleep, how we're going to treat our partner, uh, and how we get along with our peers and respond to our coworkers. So it's all one piece. And if people can uh, um, understand the core that's at the a heart of all of that and connects it all, then they've got a multi-level approach that they can use with their children, their co-workers, their spouse, their mother-in-laws, uh, and uh, whether the other party cooperates or not, frequently you can use it because most other approaches out there require the cooperation of both parties. And, you know, that's, that's really rare a lot of times, probably 50% of the time you get an uncooperative partner. So you're really stuck then. So, 
that's what my approach does. It, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, you know, I call it, like he said, 21st century communication. The, uh, the, the, the current communication approaches out there are all based out of the 60s. Express yourself. Let me know if any of this sounds familiar. Be honest and open about your anger. Repressed anger kills. Um, never, uh, no secrets. Be honest about what you're thinking and feeling at all times. And never go to bed mad at each other or you're running from the problem. Does any of that sound uh, familiar, Joanne? It does, and I don't agree with all of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> I think but, that, you know, secrets, as long as they don't harm another person, there's nothing wrong with the secret because not everything, you know, it's not as if you get in a relationship and then you have this big spoon that you go down and scoop up all the par- your partner's uh, insides. I mean, I just don't think that's reasonable. That's my yeah. experience anyway. Well, here's the problem, though. People would agree with that, a lot of people. The problem is, and let me know if you're familiar with this, when we get angry, we can't do that. We resort to our, because of the biochemistry involved, we resort back to our, we do those very things we promise we're not going to do. I'm not going to get in your face. I'm not going to get ugly. I'm not going to bring up the past. And as soon as we get break, uh, get get upset, which, which the science for it is as soon as we have a fight or flight hijack of our brain, the amygdala hijack, I call it our crocodile brain hijack, then all of that stuff goes out the window because the science shows that, you know, we have two parts of our brain that's the focus of our interactions with others that I want to focus on. One is the cerebral cortex, right, the front part of our brain, rational thought, logic, love, music, spirituality, empathy comes from there. And then the back part of our brain behind our ears, our amygdala, I call it our crocodile brain, because it's like, that's how we act when we get into it. Uh, dark, bleak, doom, gloom, uh, survival at the moment. Uh, and what happens is there's a hypothalamus in between those two. It's a switching unit. It switches blood from one brain to the other in response to our perceived threat. So the problem is we our perception of threat that activates our amygdala is, or our crocodile brain is very bad at perceiving real from imagined, big from small threats. That's why we react the same way to somebody taking the parking spot we were waiting for patiently to a bear about to eat us. The brain, that's where road rage comes from. The brain uh, figures if survival's at stake, I never get a second chance, so it's better to be safe than sorry. So 99.9% of the time, it overreacts, and that's where the bad stuff happens. Because your loved one who put the, put the spoon in the dishwasher in the wrong way is not equivalent to a bear or a T-Rex about to eat you. But the body responds the same way. Now, if we plug in... And, and basically what the science says, it's real fascinating. The science shows that blood gets rerouted from the front to the back part of our brain up to 75%. So basically the front thinking, rational thought, evaluating, judging, uh, appraising the situation, moderating our words, falls asleep. We can't do it. And our back brain gets rerouted all that blood and becomes like on steroids, turns into the Hulk. And so now it's called, that's called the amygdala hijack or crocodile brain hijack, and it hijacks our brain. Now, let me ask you, Joanne, have you ever been in a place where you've had this internal dialogue going on in your head? Now, stay calm. You know, this is going to have real bad consequences. No, I don't want to stay calm. I, I've got rights here. Oh, yeah. Ever, yeah. Yeah. That's the two parts of the brain actually talking to each other, and you're hearing the thought process. And as the stress keeps rising – and the hypothalamus switches more blood to the back part of our brain, a hijack takes over. And when people know they're there, because they will say, when I get to this point, it's like um, words are coming out of my mouth, but I can't stop it. Mm. It's like I see a film of my life unfolding, but I can't do anything about it. And I'll, from that point on, everything that occurs is uh, we, we change. Our lens gets dark. Our mood gets provocative. It's a conflict-seeking brain. So, and it's um, very destructive. So, um, uh, you know, it's like you put on a a pair of dark sunglasses and you look at a white piece of paper and you're going to see dark green. 
And no matter how much people argue that it's really white and it's the paper you asked for, for the copier, you're going to get very oppositional and combative because you know green when you see green and they're just confirming what you, what this brain uh, thinks. Suspicious, paranoid, you think I'm a fool and I don't know green when I see green. So all you're doing is pushing them deeper into this brain. And that's why arguments occur. Now, if we plug in what we talked about earlier, the conventional approaches developed in the 60s. That was the era of Woodstock. Uh, let it all hang out, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, skinny dipping, where people would run across the neighborhood butt naked. Uh, uh, that was developed at that time. Let it all hang out. Be honest about what you're feeling and thinking. Repressed anger kills. And don't go to bed mad at each other. Well, think about this. So you're now in this combat-seeking mode. You're seeing the other party as someone out to harm you. Uh, you're misinterpreting. You can't evaluate the situation. And you're encouraged to tell them what you feel and think. Very bad, because that brain is not a healing brain. It is a combat brain. So all you're doing is you're generating combat, and it's highly inflammatory. Now, the other side of this is when you look at it from the, the, the health perspective, inflammation in the body is, is the source of all disease. No inflammation, no disease. Well, when we get upset, it's the fight-or-flight response taking over, and it's an inflammatory state. So inflamed body, inflamed mind, inflamed thoughts, inflammatory words. Inflammation in the body leads to disease. Inflammatory words leads to diseased relationships. Resentment, loss of love, caring, regret, uh, communication snafus, etc., etc. And so what the conventional communication approaches have done is they have – uh, made, they've given people techniques to inflame the situation and increase the conflict when it's used and also increase their health problems because it just feeds back in a feedback loop. The worse uh, stress hits, I communicate in an inflammatory way as my lens darkens and blood reroutes to the back of my brain. We now get into an argument. We get along more poorly. I don't sleep that night. I have a headache, a stomach ache. More stress chemicals are released, more inflammatory speech, more encouragement of telling them what you feel and think at that moment before blood reroutes back to your thinking brain. And you can use your full brain and not just half of it. We get, and we get along. Now we're in a negative feedback loop. And then what happens is the, the other part of that, the, the latest science on neuroplasticity, which says that the brain is fluid is constantly growing and shrinking neurons to adapt to our environment. When we're stuck in this chronic situation, the front part of our brain shrinks and the back crocodile survival brain expands and becomes our default setting. We're always angry. We're negative, ruminating thoughts. We're constantly defensive, attacking. We're, we're uh, holding on to resentments. Uh, and then that feeds that whole process. So um, basically... I developed a, an approach that cuts through all of that and gets people right away, like instantly on a healing track. Uh, that sounds amazing. And certainly anything would be preferable to what you just described. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It, it's like, oh, yes, now I remember. I don't want to remember things like that. I want a new way of being. So tell us your untalk therapy uh, tactics. What do we do? All right. Well, it sounds contradictory. How do you teach people not to talk in order to, re to communicate better, right? That doesn't even seem to make sense. But from the perspective I just gave you, uh, you know, what I've been doing over 40, 30 years plus, almost 40 with this, is trying to get this to the place where, you know, we all want a pill, one-step method. We're just busy. What I want to do is one thing that will get rid of my cancer and my conflict and all of this stuff. So, what I've done is keep, I've kept boiling it down. I need something simpler because when we're in the middle of conflict or high stress, it's really, it, there's a lot of emotional debris and we can't think straight. So I need something very clear, easy to grasp, and immediate results. So what I boiled it down to was 
uh, like a five-step program, which sounds more complicated than it is. One, see it. So let me ask you, I'll walk you through it real, real quick. How can you tell when your fight or flight response is kicking in? Is your blood pressure rising? Can you feel your heart pumping hard? Your, your thoughts turn to mush, as one per, pe- person told me. What is it for you? I think uh, I have heat in my chest. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know that that's the way it is for me. Heat in my chest. And what's happening is when we go into the fight or flight response, our blood vessels and our lungs are expanding 1,200%. So you're having this rush of blood, and that heat is that influx of blood. That's why we sweat. The body's trying to moderate the internal changes going on. So, okay. So here it is. My, with me, my stomach gets knotted up in a certain way that I know is not due to what I ate, but it's due to my crocodile brain getting activated. So step one, see it. You have to be able to spot when you're about to go into crocodile brain and lose any ability to moderate what you're saying, be constructive in what you're saying, and you're going to go down a negative path. So even though when we're calm, our goal is to resolve stuff and get along with my boss, my children, my spouse, and get along better, when we go into crocodile brain, we, we turn into conflict-seeking. We get provocative. So it's important to stay out of that mindset when you're communicating and interacting with the other party uh, if you want to resolve the issue. If you do not, then go into it and just spill your guts out. I call it regurgitation communication where we get in touch with uh, you know, all the crap we're feeling, some of it from 20 or 30 years ago, and I just puke it all over the other party. Great. The problem is uh, we're a lot more, you know, there's cost to that. Loss of caring, love, sexual uh, problems, uh, communication snafus, hatred. I mean, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. And it's so, not the other, excuse me, and it's not the other person's problem. No, it's mine. It's all going on inside my head. Right. Right. And as you articulate it to the uh, to the other person, they're sitting there dumbfounded because it doesn't have a thing to do with them. Yeah, and that goes back. Let's take a look at it from this perspective. Have you ever seen somebody who was calm and then they got upset over something little, the dishes in the dishwasher? Uh, and it's like an alien takes over their body and it's like a new creature. And then they laugh. Something get They get over it. They laugh about something. And the alien leaves almost instantaneously, and they're back to who they were before. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the two parts of the brain. What you're seeing is the two parts of the brain controlling the body. When the alien kicks in, our crocodile brain takes over, and through the autotomic nervous system, which connects to 90% of our organs, heart, liver, lungs, all that, it jacks it up. That's why the alien is hostile, looking at you with the evil eye, saying loud things, provocative, bringing up the past. Uh, contentious, and when the alien leaves, the front part of the brain takes control and calms all of those organs down. So what does that say about communication? Well, you don't want to be talking when crocodile brain is in control of us, aka if we use conventional communication approaches, that's what people do. They're encouraged to do it, and if you don't, you're running from the problem. You can't go to bed mad at each other. That's like, uh, uh, you know, that's like a lynching thing. Uh, you got to deal with it now. So people, they don't go to bed mad at each other. They stay up all night. And then the next day or two, they continue it with it these. It goes long, on, chapter two. Yeah, with all of these texts about, you know, pages and pages of, of incredibly destructive stuff. But they've been encouraged. You have to get it out. You so what is your solution in when these things happen? All right. So first thing, see it. You got you to spot when you're in crocodile brain or the other parties in crocodile brain. Can you see? I know when my wife's in crocodile brain, her face changes, her eyes, her looks, her tone. Can you tell when someone you're involved with, a child, a friend, a peer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we all can tell. That's a bad time to communicate because they're not <laughs> looking to resolve. They're, yeah. looking, they're seeing you as a meal. I was just, just going to say, not. they're looking for blood. That's right. That's right. And the science shows talking through that is the worst possible way. But, sure. So step one is see it. Step two, I, I call it disrupt it. That's when well, you need a pause switch. You need to get away. Ideally, you want to be around the other party and be in control without having to 
leave. But initially, that's too hard for people. So as a skill building exercise, initially, I have people get away before you vomit on them. Give them the look, say something, roll your eyes, whatever it is. Get away, calm down, step three, detox it. Now, how are you going to calm down? The science says there's a lot of different ways. Exercise is the greatest thing because one of them, because you have these chemicals made for a fight or flight. That's why you're so anxious when we get upset. The worst thing you could possibly do is just sit in that. It basically, you're cooking your insides. Those chemicals are made for movement. And if you sit in your room stewing, you're stewing your insides. That's why chronic stress raises our cancer risk 3,000%, premature aging from 9 to 17 years, heart attack, stroke rate by 2,000%, bad stuff. So detox it. What calms you down? Let me ask you this, Joan. What calms you down when you're upset or just in general? Um, I go to my room, lay down on my bed and read. Read. Reading science shows that when we read, we have to re-engage the front part of our brain, which causes brain to route there. That's why we get relaxed. Because when our front brain is in control, it's called the rest, digest, and repair. So it, it calms those same things down. Calming music, comedy, um, a, your spiritual walk, whatever it is. Uh, there's a whole list of, there's a whole list of things that'll calm people down. Look, uh, um, control breathing. Uh, gosh, there's, there's so many things I can talk about. But the science says when we do the kissing, touch. I grab my dog and I hug her. Just the act of touch. Smiling. There's two little glands on the top of our, our lips. When we smile, it activates the, uh, the, re- the relaxation response and it releases endorphins just from the simple act of smiling. Kissing does it, touch, etc. So, getting uh, step one, see it, know when you're about to lose it, or they are looking. So, see, when your partner is upset in crocodile brain, they're not looking to resolve stuff. That's why they're looking for a battle. That's why they twist everything you say into pretzels. Miss here. They don't want to resolve, they want conflict. Yeah, they want to fight. Yes, so you're not going to give it to them because if you give it to them, then they're going to feed that back onto you. And the next thing you know, you're both going to be in crocodile brain trying to eat the other party. And, you know, your love dies and your relationship over time. So step one, see it. Know when you're in it and it's not a good time to talk or when they're in it and it's not a good time to talk. Step two, pause, disrupt the pattern by putting in a pause switch. So. Well, I know when my stomach starts getting in a knot, my sarcasm goes from funny to biting. So before I get sarcastic with people around me, I will, if I can't control it and stay on top of it, which I usually can at this point, I will leave, get calmer, do my things that calm me down, and then I will re engage step four. That's the time to communicate when you and they are in a brain that's receptive. Step five, uh, and people I find communicate very well when they're in, they're both in their front brain, when they're in their thinking brain. People communicate, they know, don't get in your face, don't be hostile, don't make, don't bring up the past, stay on the topic. The problem is when they're in crocodile brain, they cannot access, access it and all the promises they made, okay, the next time we get mad, we're not going to get in each other's face, we're going to stay on the topic, not you know, not use toxic words, goes out the window and we do those very things to provoke the other party. So giving people rules in your office, on the internet, whatever it is, that you expect them to do when they're upset sets them up for failure. Do Mm -hmm. you see why? Mm -hmm. Because they try to do it, they fail, they then internalize it, there must be something wrong with us. The books say it, The experts say it, our counselors say it, our family members say it. So we must be more broken than we thought. And so now you're increasing another stressor. You're giving them a technique that can't possibly work. They're blaming themselves. It's increasing their stress, which is increasing their conflict. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, it sounds very sad. (laughs) 
just sounds very sad. Uh, what's number five, Philip? The five is, na- I call it navigate it. What do you do when, you, when you're trying? So here's your situation. This is where conventional approaches put people in a no situ- no-win situation, the gift that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you walk in the door, you know, you're having a good day, and you open the door, and you know the other party's in crocodile brain, right? Sure. We all know. Yep. They got to look. They bring up certain topics. They're quiet. Uh-oh. So now you got a problem. It's like, okay, Houston, we got a problem. Uh, if I say they're going to want to talk, but I know they don't want to talk to resolve it. They want to talk to get into an argument, right? Mm-hmm. But if I don't say anything, they're going to escalate and poke and poke and poke until we get into it anyway. Does that sound familiar? Oh, yeah. So, push, we're in, so I call it push, push, push. Yes. So we appear to be in a no-win situation. But if you understand what's going on, you're not in a no-win situation. Let me ask you, Joanna, why are they, when you're trying to escape, you go into the next room, they follow you, close the door, they barge in, you leave the house, they threaten you. Why don't they want you to escape? And escape is the key word. Escape. What are they, they want to be right about something. They want to draw blood. They want to attack you. They... No, no, you think crocodile brain. The prey is escaping. Oh, oh, okay. So they're baiting you back into conflict because crocodile brain is a reciprocal brain. It needs conflict in return. Fire needs oxygen. Crocodile brain needs conflict so when you're not giving it to them you're shutting off the oxygen and they're going through withdrawal wow so the worst thing you could possibly do is try to talk through it now uh, uh, so what i do with people i'll say is okay so can you go in the other room five percent will say that'll work the other party say the other 95 percent will say no they're following me can you close the door another five percent say that'll keep me out the other 90 percent will say No, they'll barge in. Can you lock the door? Another 5% says that will work. The other 85%, and I'm slight exaggeration here, but you'll get the message. The other 85% will say, no, why not? Well, because they'll get in the car, they'll ram it through the wall, and while I'm pinned in the rubble, they will finish the argument. Oh, geez. (laughs) Slight exaggeration, but not much. Not really, not really. When you read the newspapers or whatever, not the newspapers, but when you see headlines, you know that these things happen. Yes, so they're not going to let you escape. So, I, so, see, when people think if I just ignore them, they're going to thank me. Or if I try to talk sense through them, let me ask you, has this ever worked, Joanne? Uh, listen, to you. so the other party's upset, and you say to them, hey, you're really upset, you're out of control, you're doing stuff, you're going to have great regrets for, saying things you're going to regret a lot, uh, so chill out. And the other party says, you know, thank you, dear, now I know why. God put you in my life because <laughs> you are the words of sanity and I need to be forever thankful for you for keeping me from going down a path that is not good. Does that ever happen? No. Ever? No. No. What they do is they go for your jugular. Absolutely. Don't you, yeah. Don't you. Who the hell are you to tell me what to do? Right. Get in your face, etc. So. Oh, when we give people, that's what people do. They expect because that's what my peers have been telling them are telling them. Talk your way through it. No, they're not no, interested. No, no. In people blah. are not interested in blah blah blahs. They just don't want that. They want they want to kill you. That's it. Number That's one, because crocodile brain is only interested in survival at the moment. If I survive this battle, I'll worry about the consequences later. If I am alive, right? You see what's going on. See how clear it becomes. So what do you do if you have this situation? Well, there's a lot of ways to get through to the other party that the science says you can get through. Uh, Touch does it sometimes. Some people, you you know, I had one one guy said, oh, I know when my fiance is in crocodile brain. I try to give her a hug and she says, don't touch me. So some people will push you away. Some people can hug. Sometimes I'll put on calming music. Uh, I'll, I'll tell my wife I love her. Before I leave, I'll say, honey, thank you for your love. It's the most precious gift to me uh, in my life. And what you're doing when you're doing all of these things, touch, kiss, hugs, calming music, comedy, plus there's a whole slew of other stuff. What you're doing is you're activating the front part of your brain. And when it clicks on, the alien will leave and the person will return. 
that's what you want to do. The science says that talking through is the worst possible way. Now, what I put together, which is about to go live, is a free 50-minute webinar for your audience and whoever else in which I walk people through this whole process. It's called How to Stop Your Fighting Tonight and Start Your Trek Back to Love, which I want to offer to your audience. It's, uh, it's got about 100-plus graphics. I use different masks, uh, a lot of good stuff to explain this concept. So if anybody's interested in learning more about it, just go to my site, letstalkmorelove.com, sign up for it, and it'll be ready to go very shortly. There you go, people. Um Less Talk, More Love, spelled as you think it would be spelled. And that is Philip DeLuca's website address. And you can reach him at DeLuca CSW, LCSW, which means licensed clinical social worker. So DeLuca LCSW at gmail.com. Well, Philip DeLuca has given us many things to think about, people. And what I want you to do is start from scratch and re-listen to this from the beginning because you might have missed a lot of things because I know I'm here listening intensely and I know that I have missed some things. So I'm going to listen to this again because what Philip DeLuca is presenting to society is a method and a way for relationships to heal and move forward, not to be stagnated and remain argumentative and hostile and then have somebody ran their car into your house while you're trying to survive and um, give us one last strategy Philip before we complete this specific podcast sure. I find the magic pill the most bang for the buck is if you can stay out of crocodile brain hijack that will bring the most bang for the money by far so identify when you're going into it and then disengage before you, your mouth moves and you say stuff that you can't moderate and modulate at all or judge accurately. And then get back around the party. Now, some people will pull away and they'll just stew. They'll stew in their room. Uh, and then they'll get back around the other party and finish the argument. Very, very bad. You have to detox those chemicals. You have to get calmer. And then get back around the other party. And I find, really, people communicate quite well when they both can stay in uh, their front brain, their genius brain, their thinking brain. So stay out of crocodile brain, stay in your genius brain, and you don't need me. That's why I call it untalk therapy. Uh, I teach people how not to talk when they are upset. And I call it untherapy because if people can learn the skill, which I'm, you know, part of which is I show in my course, uh, they don't need a therapist. They don't need any more Dr. Fields because they know how to assess and treat themselves from that point forward. What an incredible thing to have, a lifelong skill that you can teach yourself at, with very little effort or knowledge. Well, this makes sense to me, people. This makes sense to me. Thank you, Philip DeLuca, and thank you, listeners, for being here today. I want you to share this podcast with anyone you know, and again, reminding you to re-listen to this over and over again, and don't forget to go to lesstalkmorelove.com. And when you're on iTunes, which I hope some of you will go to, give this podcast and Philip DeLuca uh, a great review, and you can also give a five-star review to this podcast, the Sanity Project podcast. And also you can go to my website at askjoannevictoria.com and check out my latest, the Be Your Authentic Self self-study system you complete by yourself in your own time for those of you who don't want to hire myself or Philip. And you have a whole slew of PDFs, audios, and videos for $297. So if you have any questions about this podcast or anything else, please email me at ask joannevictoria at, at gmail.com. And thank you, Philip DeLuca, for being here today. This is a great, great topic, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. My, my honor. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project podcast. Please go to askjoannevictoria.com and continue the conversation on my podcast page and get a free copy of my book, The True Self Handbook, a guide to transform your life. That's askjoannevictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.